something behind that his barrier. Ah, oh, way up there. I could also get over there, which probably won't do anything, but I want to try. Over there, would I be able to get back? Mm, probably. Uh, let me see if there's a control point just right up here. Yes. Ability points. It really doesn't matter. I've got everything that I really care about at all. Um, yeah. Money cat. <laughs> How you doing? Can I do anything with you? Just a cute money cat, that's all. And I think, yeah, I could definitely make it back. Now, can I make it up there? No, no way. Yeah, that's not possible. Now with any painting, I'm like, is there something behind that? Part 1. To whoever finds this, I am Containment Processes Designer... Uh, how do you pronounce that? John? John? John Gibbs, and I'm writing this to document the largest building shift to ever occur. Holding. Uh, hold on. Wasn't that the person... Uh, the creature we killed in the basement lab? Here are the facts. A considerably large section of the containment sector, including the Processes and Protocols offices, our research facilities, and a fair chunk of the firebreak have been yanked down to a chasm that reaches far below lobby level, I think. It was a violent shift, and I regret to report several casualties. Injuries were sustained by all, but many of us, myself included, are still mobile. We set up a base camp and started triaging. There are still supplies. We explored our surroundings and found caverns, of all things. Maybe we're in some kind of cave threshold, like the quarry? Wherever we are, we're not the first. There were some rusty power cores, old lights, signs, infrastructure. What was this area used for? Why did they seal it off? Why have we never heard of it? More importantly, how are we going to get out? It's 
why this section is newer. It quite literally is newer. It was shifted down here. Kiev summary. Or Kiev? Uh, a series of reverberating sounds observed in downtown Kiev with no clear point of origin. The event was witnessed by the city's general public. Mental and physical symptoms were reported, including aphasia, sleep paralysis, and excess in the reported individuals. Due to the brief nature of the event, overseas bureau agents were not able to respond while it was active. Immediately upon arrival, agents collected audio recordings taken by local witnesses. All bureau monitoring stations located at global junctions of acoustic amplification were directed to monitor any auditory events of similar pitch, wavelength, and duration in an effort to trace echoes or epicenters. In the following weeks, similar cases were reported from both various amateur sources and bureau stations in major cities across the globe. The subsequent events diminished in volume and frequency per each occurrence. Event is believed to be generated by planar friction, though this is not confirmed. Right, just leads up here. Director Faden here. Send back up to my location. We're oh. This together. Hey. hey. Sorry, I didn't realize that's what that was. Oh, this looks really cool. So many knobs and lights. Wonder how long they'll stick with me. Flickering light up there. Thank you, Ranger. Oh no, oh no, ah!
They barely took any damage. Good job. All right, let's search this place thoroughly. There's a lot of rooms to it. Don't worry, Ranger, it's fine. I wonder how long they're going to stick with me for. to America overnight, now in its 29th year. Or is it? It is, don't worry. Tonight, we're discussing thrift store oddities and one-of-a-kind finds. Peggy's on the line from Biloxi. She and her husband found a beautiful Himalayan salt lamp at a garage sale. Tell us about it, Peggy. I'd heard of salt lamps, you know, those glowy rocks you plug in. They're supposed to release negative ions. Clear the air? I got one. Only four bucks, and I put it in our living room. I thought it would look nice there. It gives the whole room this lovely orange glow. Now, this is usually when the call takes a turn. It's my husband. When he's in the living room, he won't take his eyes off the lamp. He's obsessed with it. If I turn it off, he gets so upset. He says it needs to stay on, no matter what. Last night, I woke up at 3 a.m. He wasn't in bed. I found him in the living room, staring at the lamp. He was smiling. His eyes were open, but I thought he might be sleepwalking. So I shook him. He just kept smiling at the light. Then, he started to speak. He said, every time a reflection reflects itself, it gets a little greener. I've read that. And then he turned to me. He was still smiling, eyes open. My husband's eyes are brown, almost black. But the eyes of the man in the living room last night, his eyes were green. Sounds just like the cave. The only thing you can't have is a Peggy, I'm so sorry to cut you off there, but we need to go to commercial. I'd like you to stay on the line, though. My producer, Karen, needs a little more information. Okay? Uh, okay. America Overnight will be right back. God, that's creepy as hell, especially because we know that it probably did happen and is real and is an altered world event or part of an altered object. Did you hear that? Deployed Ranger, wasn't that creepy? Yeah, and we know that America Overnight is like a, a front for the Bureau, a way for them to find leads. Aha! Another one! Polaris was. They nodded in enjoyment. I heard that, Jesse, and it was good.
computer program. Dear House of Representatives, my husband Francis read an article before he died about how the universe was really just a computer program. He believed it. I thought it sounded silly, but now I think he was right. Francis was hit by a car a few months ago. A drunk driver. I don't think it was supposed to happen. My neighbor's son, Jeremy, broke one of our windows with a football a week before Francis died. Francis yelled at Jeremy for it. He was a bit harsh. This is important because I see Jeremy on his computer through their living room window. He's on it all the time. His mother says he's a computer whiz. I think Jeremy is operating the computer program and he changed the universe so that driver would hit Francis. He did it to get back at Francis for yelling at him. Is there a way to change the computer and make Francis come back? I have some money if it's expensive. I don't know how these things work. I don't care if Jeremy gets in trouble or not, I just want Francis to come home. Francis and I were very happy together. I can feel him not being here and I, I know it's not right. Sincerely, Stephanie Miller. That's an odd and very sad letter. So shiny. Level 6 weapon armor damage, that's gotta be really good. Oh no, level 5. Still, plus 138% damage against enemy armor. I don't think I need that for any of these weapons, perhaps. But for something like charge, it'd be really good. for Marshall. Speaking of, what's up with Marshall? Hmm. 
Oh, I totally should be able to fit through there. That's really silly. Give supplement. Recordings of the audio phenomena were uploaded onto the internet shortly after the event. These records circulated rapidly on popular message boards. The communications department utilized this exposure by creating sky trumpet hoax videos and posting related theories to spread confusion and draw attention away from the event's paranatural origin. Industrial noise, particularly the sound of metal drilling, was found to be a widely accepted explanation. Theories about the sounds emanating from the Earth, uh, from the Earth itself, known as seismic hum, emerged from the public itself and were encouraged by the Bureau to generate further misdirection and eventual public disinterest. Witnesses of the event were monitored discreetly afterwards. Observed symptoms were consistent with deprivation, but subsided after 12 to 15 days. The length of the symptoms directly correlated to the individual's proximity unsheltered, to the supposed epicenter. One, one linked, although accidental, causality can be listed. See a report regarding the effects of planar friction on hearing aids. You're listening to America Overnight, a beacon in the darkest recesses of possibility for more than 29 years. We have another letter from a listener. This one's unsigned, but postmarked from Toledo. It says, Dear America Overnight, I have the most wonderful appliance for your listeners. It is a miracle of God. A fondue set. A fountain. A blessed gift. Blessed is spelled with a capital B. Hmm. Go on, they write. Dive on in. It is molten hot. Perfect for meat. No signature. As far as I know, no fondue set was sent to us here at the studio. Just this letter. Wait. I think there's something else in the envelope. Some kind of black powder. With white shards in it? Karen. What is this? Karen? On the air, Karen. Where are you? What's this powder in the booth? Is this... Is this ash? Oh. Oh, God. Karen? How do I cut to commercial? Shift Account Part 2 Gibbs, reporting in. It's been eight days since the collapse and still no sign of any rescue efforts. The Bureau is either completely unaware of our situation or incapable of helping us. Or maybe it's intentional. How many times have we seen the Bureau not give two shits about its own hardworking staff when they go missing in this place? How many times do we let it slide thinking, oh, at least it wasn't me? Too many, I'm ashamed to admit. Anyway, there have been some developments. Strange crystals have begun growing through the walls. They seem to block some corridors, but not others. The path to the caves is always left open, but we're not sure why. Luckily, the crystals keep out the astral spike. One's been hounding us for days. John, Nikolai, or Nikolai, and Sarah went to try to find a radio, but never came back. We think the spike got them. I think it's hunting us. Doug says spikes only exist in the astral plane, so what the fuck is it doing here? If we get out of here, I'm hiring a lawyer. These are unsuitable working conditions.
So that's the altered item. Looks pretty secure. Is that the thing they used to film Ahti? And generated a new altered item in doing so? I'm not sure, like, should I just start pressing buttons and see what happens? I should hire someone who built smaller machines. <laughs> God, this thing looks so cool. Can rip panels off. Press the button to see what happens, I guess. No power. Typical. Ah. Warning. Altered item detected in transfer bay. Access is prohibited for safety regulation 18.8. So, wait, where do I get the energy cubes from? I need three. Oh, wait a sec. Oh! Inside of here! <laughs> oh, that's so cool!
Right, that was locked from the other side. Properly trained. Guess I pass. I am very properly trained. Is there something altered about this elevator? There's a handprint up there. Around it, actually. That's weird. I don't... I don't know if I should go there yet. No, right? I still have... my thing to do here. Why is it making squelching noises in there? <laughs> Hidden location. Oh. New language. I learned a brand new language. The fish taught me. You probably don't believe me, so I'll prove it. Uh, a bunch of stuff I can't read. See, publish. Uh, please publish this letter and maybe other fish speakers will get in touch. They'll be able to read my address, even if you can't. That was a dead letter. I just came from here, right? Yes. Movie camera supplement. The item first came to the Bureau's attention after a hospitalized mailman from Arkansas claimed his injuries had been caused by a movie camera. Further investigation connected the incident to uh, A-180, which was being shipped in the mail truck at the time. The packaged camera was later found in an empty warehouse. The return address led agents to a P.O. box located in the San Fernando Valley belonging to a company called Blessed Pictures. Whether Blessed Pictures is involved in the creation and decimation of the item's VHS films is unknown. The following is a list of all known films believed to have been shot uh, by the camera. Shoot First, Die Last, unreleased. Coffee Bullet. Billy's First Car. Bike Hard. Delivery Disaster. And then in reference to Shoot First, Die Last, it says item was used in the filming of an unreleased western in 1968 on the Italian island of Sardinia. A cast member was killed during an onset accident, stopping production. It's believed that Blessed Pictures bought the camera when equipment from the shoot was sold at auction. Shift account part three. It's clear no one is coming. We're running out of ideas and supplies. We tried going into the caves to find anything edible, but all we found were noxious gases and endless pits. The crystals only let us go one way, even though we could see the caves branched out. We did find some weird spiky pillar. I only got a glimpse of it before the astral spikes attacked. There were a few of them this time. We lost a lot of people. There's only six of us left. We didn't ask for this. We didn't want to come down here. I'm convinced something brought us here. The others say I'm going nuts, but it's clear that this was no house shift. Shifts slide a bathroom a sector over or rotate a hallway, 
They don't drop full divisions into some caves. We were brought here, I know it. But for what? Why tear us away from our lives just to torture us? If this is some sort of test or mission, then here's some advice for whoever's running it. Give out clear instructions next time. Hope these notes are a good read for whatever ranger finds them. Fuck you. Put that in your report. Worst I've ever seen. I snuck into the Foundation through a back door I know. Had to get ahead of the hiss. Just a matter of bypassing the ritual protections. Luckily, the board's as distracted as the rest of the Bureau. I had to put on a brave face up there. But the situation is the worst I've ever seen. We're getting back on our feet, but we've already lost so much. Trench is dead. Darling is... somewhere. I'm the only one left. But I still have a job to do. Keep the hiss back. There's not enough HRAs to spare, so I'll have to make do with what I've got. Frankly, I don't even know what will happen if the hiss take the nail. Trench made it sound like it'd be the end of the world. He was never one to exaggerate. Well, orders are orders even if they come from a dead man. Hiss take the nail. End of the world. So I can't let the Hiss take the nail. Not a problem. I know how to handle them. I love this newfound confidence that Jesse had. You know, at the start of all this, they had no idea what was happening. They were so confused by everything. Although they did feel at home, even in the beginning. It all felt like this stuff was making sense, sort of, but still new to them. But now, there's still a lot they don't understand, but they feel comfortable. Sort of. As comfortable as you can feel around stuff this mysterious and unpredictable. Another etching. They're going to try to stop me again, aren't they? Hmm, not that time. now, don't we? Wasn't my idea. Blame the eyeball. Mm. Former. Yeah, we've had our differences. But it is giving me something you won't. Should I take it? If it's a trick? I mean, how could it hurt me, though?
I don't like you deciding what I can't slash can't have. <laughs> Making fun of the way they talk. Dang, Jesse. I'm getting pretty tired of being jerked around the astral plane. If you're listening, I want some answers! This looks like the land of former. of you to give me something the board wouldn't. What are you getting out of it? <laughs> so I'm just supposed to believe you're a particularly charitable, uh, whatever you are? <laughs> Hungry. I mean, yeah, actually, I'd love a sandwich or something. That's not what you meant. Are you part of the board? Or used to be? Okay, so you split because the board blamed you for... <sighs> Gotta be easier to play charades. Do I need to rescue someone? I don't know what I expected. Listen, this has been great, but I have to go. Thanks for your help and, uh, stay out of trouble. What was former trying to tell me about the board? Should I trust either of them? Sounds like they're trying to say that the nail is a, a leech or something like that. Right, because I'm trying to restore the nail, but it sounds like they're saying 
I should do the opposite. Research site Gamma and the Canyon Rim. Wait, there's... Well, whatever's over here is... Like where that question mark is, that's covered up by... The question marks. The path that leads to it, because I don't see a path over here. Hmm. Anyway, alright, well, I think I'm going to end this episode here, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. When I return, we're going to finish exploring this little place and look for the other two parts we need to restore the nail.